hot and we are also streaming it live on facebook we'll be sharing <laughs> we are we are on facebook as well now we are sharing the link of the video so that our audience can share it on their social media Uh, Professor Mustafa K. Muzri and dear participants, namaste and good morning. Welcome to NICE Economic Lecture Series. Through NICE Economic Lecture Series, we aim to invite eminent economists to discuss the contemporary economic issues at the time when the world is struggling with post-COVID recovery, which has further been hit by the Russia Ukraine crisis. Before we start, let me briefly introduce NICE. Nepal Institute for International Cooperation and Engagement is a research think tank Register under the Companies Act 2006 of Nepal, working towards bringing in research excellence in the field of international relations, international economy, security, and development, and looking for better approaches for enhanced international cooperation and relations for a better, peaceful, and stable world. To talk on a very important topic of today, Bangladesh at 50, unfinished agenda for inclusive development, we have very senior expert from Bangladesh, Professor Mustafa K. Muzri. Dr. Mustafa K. Muzri is the Executive Di Director at the Institute of Inclusive Finance and Development. Previously, he served as the Director General of BIDS since April 2009. He was also the Chief Economist of the Bangladesh Bank, the Central Bank of Bangladesh. During his professional career, he also served as the Poverty Monitoring Analysis Advisor at UNDP in Cambodia, Project Leader of the IDRC's Program of Micro-Impact on Microeconomic and Adjustment Policies in Bangladesh, Director of Research of the Center in Integrated Rural Development for Asia and Pacific, Visiting Faculty at the Department of Economics, University of Queensland, Barishben, National Expert in the Bangladesh Planning Commission, and Associate Professor of Economics at Raj Sahi University. Dr. Muzeri obtained a PhD in Economics from Manchester University in Canada in 1978, after his graduation from Raj Sahi University in 1970. He has wide ranging experience in consultancy and research on development issues in different UN and other international organizations and other multilateral, bilateral and private sector organizations, including NGOs. He has, wide, he has traveled widely and have work experience in many countries of the world and attended workshops, seminar and meetings on wide range of development issues. He has published extensively in national and international journal. He has also served in various policy making and other committees at both national and international level. His current areas of research include poverty and MDGs, monitoring analysis, micro policy analysis and strategy development issues, application of modeling and quantitative techniques in development policy, policy public policy analysis, sustainable rural and participatory development, social development, poverty reduction, strategic form formation and policy program development, monitoring and evaluation of programs and projects, and monetary policy analysis. This session is of 60 minutes, and the program is streaming live on several Facebook pages and social media platforms. We would like to request all our participants to tweet about the event and also share our live video on the social media so that maximum can benefit from the discussion. 
The audience can drop their question on the Facebook Live or in Zoom chat. Professor uh, Muzeri, over to you, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, you can hear me. Yes, sir, we can hear you. Sir. Okay, you thank you very much. Yeah, honorable members of the Nepal Institute for International Cooperation and Engagement, distinguished guests from Nepal and other countries, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning from Dhaka. It is my great pleasure to participate in this August gathering of distinguished luminaries and academicians from Nepal and other South Asian countries. I express my deep gratitude to Nepal Institute for International Cooperation and Engagement for organizing this lecture and inviting me to speak on the development experience of Bangladesh over the last 50 years since independence in 1971, especially focusing on the unfinished agenda for inclusive development. <clears throat> As you will all agree, for all South Asian countries, the concept of inclusive development is highly relevant as the ultimate goal, since rising inequalities are threatening sustained socioeconomic progress and will and well-being of the left behind communities in all our countries, leading to unsustainable exploitation of the limited resource base and degradation of the environment. In the South Asian context, inclusive development is about countering exclusiveness such that the growth process does not lead to a concentration of wealth and income in certain sectors and to certain groups in society. Similarly, inclusive development must not fail to increase the participation and accountability of all social groups and reduce the disparities in knowledge, capacity, and income focusing on specific communities marginalized and excluded from access to social services and opportunities. In, in an increasingly globalizing world, there is an inherent tendency on the part of our countries to prioritize the economic dimension of development while the distributive issues and caring for the environment issue a somewhat subdued role. The pursuit of the new liberalizing, new liberal paradigm further downgrades the issues of distribution in our countries. While the inclusive development paradigm calls for a focus on local resource management, since the poor and marginalized are directly dependent on local resources for livelihoods, the global trend puts greater emphasis on establishing global ecocentric standards, which the local societies are forced to increasingly adopt as the environmental utilization space with along with global compulsions. The inclusive development agenda of most of the environmentally vulnerable countries of South Asia will have to grapple with these challenges at the global level as well. The compulsion for South Asia will be to transform the inclusive development agenda into a comprehensive, sustainable, and inclusive socioeconomic transformation mechanism for the economy and society in all our countries. Ladies and gentlemen, high economic growth 
especially since the beginning of the 2000s, along with a rapid reduction in poverty, has significantly transformed Bangladesh from a country which was termed as a test case of development after its independence in 1971 to one that is now considered as a role model of development. However, the growth process has also generated substantial inequality with certain groups in society and several regions remaining less benefited from the growth dynamics. <clears throat> the process has in fact been marked by rising economic and social inequalities along with unequal access to opportunities. The government is commit, government's commitment is to pursue the inclusive development agenda with equality of opportunities, faster increases in incomes and overall well-being of the poor and deprived communities and lagging regions to achieve the overarching sustainable development goals theme of leaving no one behind. Starting with low levels of development as a low-income country in the 1970s, Bangladesh has become a lower middle-income country in 2015 and has fulfilled all three criteria in 2018 for graduation from the UN's least developed country status and is likely to be formally recognized as a developing country in 2024. In the post-LDC graduation era, productive economic transformation and creation of decent employment will be crucial for Bangladesh since sectoral diversification, human capital, technological innovation, labor mobility, and productivity growth will be closely linked with future development. The challenge for Bangladesh is to create a more diversified economic structure to raise productivity and labor income in both wage and self-employment in view of the rising labor force participation of women, the diversification of women's employment in the services sector and overseas jobs will be critical, along with changing the skills composition of migrant workers towards more skilled jobs. Improved connectivity between the rural and urban areas and among the growth centers across the country will create more jobs with diversified income sources for the rural households. This would help the non-farm and non-crop agricultural activities in the rural areas to flourish, contributing to inclusive development in the rural areas. Ladies and gentlemen, now let me speak briefly about Bangladesh's past development pattern and emerging challenges. The quest for development and improving people's well being and socioeconomic conditions and the critical development challenges that Bangladesh has been facing since its independence in 1971. In fact, Bangladesh's development agenda incorporates a social and inclusive development lens since the beginning by adopting a broader intersectoral approach along with engaging non-government and other actors such as NGOs, CBOs, private sector participants in the development efforts. The process has also been influenced by the 
Millennium Development Goals in the late 1990s and the Sustainable Development Goals in the 2000s. These processes have extended the move away from a technical approach to increasing growth towards an equally equity focused inclusive approach that highlights the overarching theme of leaving no one behind. One may, however, argue that the root of Bangladesh's focus on social and inclusive development lies in the microcredit movement after independence when the NGOs began relief and rehabilitation efforts in the liberation war ravaged the Bangladesh economy. The approach started with provision of financial services, including loans and microloans and savings, primarily available to women in poor households who had no collateral to qualify for institutional loans from the banking sector. The NGOs generally believed that such access to credit would help the poor people to move out of poverty. Over time, the approach to microcredit has broadened to cover microfinance and microenterprise loans, along with broader social development packages. The success of the microfinance model rests with several factors in Bangladesh, such as minimum entry requirements, a manageable risk with joint liability principles and insignificant non-performing loans, coupled with social development inputs. Through these integrated efforts, the NGO started to build a unique micro-level development process approach that combines financial inclusion, livelihood sustainability, and social development to empower the marginalized sections of the communities along with women taking a lead role. The NGOs were involved through group-based and other techniques in capacity building, financial literacy, livelihood promotion, preventive health care, education and training, water and sanitation, and other social development areas besides their core financial function, such as microfinance to the poor. These efforts have made significant contribution in adding value to the lives of the poor by the time-tested intervention to enhance the overall quality of their lives and import them meaningfully. At the same time, it is also true that there is a growing inequality in Bangladesh, accentuating by highly unequal access to resources, jobs, markets, infrastructure, and development benefits. Further, the unequal participation of different groups, such as women and the poor, in roles, functions, decisions, rights, and opportunities in society persistently reinforces these trends. The rapidly growing middle class and unprecedented urbanization also contribute to growing income gap and unemployment, rural urban migration, and proliferation of slum dwellings without access to the basic amenities of life. Although Bangladesh is more prosperous today compared with any time in history, the fact reveals a situation where prosperity exists alongside extreme impoverishment, growth alongside declining living standards, and extreme concentration of wealth alongside abysmal poverty 
in society. Along with income and wealth, one can observe growing geographical, gender-based, and group-based inequalities in the country. Further, inequalities in education, health, and other basic services are significantly related to income and wealth. The unequal development process has also been fueled by democratic deficit in Bangladesh under the powerful new liberal regimes. The proponents of new liberalism hold that inequity in development is the outcome of inadequate functioning of the market mechanism and prescribe that creating market-friendly social structure and economic institutions which are self-regulating and can respond to economic regulations and incentives will generate a process of inclusive and equitable development in Bangladesh. However, the development reality in Bangladesh points to the tendency towards inequality in every sphere of life, and that the structural process itself compels the state to remain strongly biased towards the rich and powerful elite. No doubt, the elite capture of the state has contributed much towards widening the democratic, democratic deficits in Bangladesh. In reality, equality and justice, along with equal opportunities for all, as ingrained in the concept of inclusive development, needs to be the cornerstone of equitable and sustainable development in Bangladesh. For the purpose, the state must guarantee equitable access to land and other natural resources and social opportunities that are vital to sustain the people's livelihoods. Deep and equitable reforms are needed to overhaul the legal, institutional, and structural arrangements in this country. Besides, it is important that the rights of women and other disadvantaged communities are ensured. The key is to ensure fair and equitable representation of for all in political, state, economic, and social institutions by abolishing all forms of discrimination in society. Ladies and gentlemen, for Bangladesh, the key for moving towards, moving forward is to ensure the development is inclusive, strong, sustainable, and balanced. For achieving such a quality, the superior, superior brand of development, the underlying policies and strategies need to cover an integrated block of policy actions to sustain and more equitably share the gains of development by making adequate investments in population groups and locations that have so far been left behind. Supporting social union dynamism and inclusive labor markets, building efficient and responsive government and institution and addressing other priority dimensions in support of inclusive development. A strong and well-designed universal social protection system has to be has to emerge as a powerful pillar of inclusive development in Bangladesh. Further, globalization, digitalization, demo, demographics, and climate change are rapidly transforming the way the economy works, creating new opportunities as well as new challenges for inclusive development. This also raises this also raises risk 
of deeper exclusion and inequalities if the gains are not evenly shared among the population and geographic regions. The present compulsion for Bangladesh is to focus on achieving higher productivity and economic growth along with addressing exclusion and inequalities through embedding both in the design of policy. The expanding opportunities in future could be better leveraged through adopting an inclusive development framework that is beneficial to all and leaves no one behind. Obviously, there may exist trade-offs among many of these policies, but policies may be adopted to create win-win situations, such as investing more in the skills of labor and young children of marginalized groups, rescaling and upskilling of workers, and promoting diffusion of technologies and innovation across all enterprises, irrespective of farm sizes, location, and other characteristics. In recent years, the prospect of a shift in designing and implementing inclusive development has brightened significantly in Bangladesh under the new environment in which new liberal policies of the Washington consensus are giving space to development models which look to a more active government role in both economic and social policy. The current economic and social challenges have also led to the adoption of a variety of policy instruments to ensure the development and inclusiveness are pursued together within an integrated framework. While the analytical framework is relatively well developed, the practice is yet to be well anchored in the policy domain since the compulsion is to adopt country-specific interventions depending on ground realities. For promoting inclusive development in Bangladesh, the most critical element is the creation of full, productive, and decent employment for the labor force, which is the most important source of both income growth and income security. Since job creation also paves the way for a broader social and economic advancement, along with extending individuals, households, and communities. To achieve a structural transformation that is inclusive, a set of coherent macroeconomic trade and labor market policies that all have an impact on wages and employment conditions are needed in Bangladesh. Rapid trade expansion presents an opportunity for job creation if the productive sectors are able to expand, participate in global value chains and increase their demand for labor. However, the policies must also be aware that greater openness to trade can also lead to disruptive adjustment processes. When rapid liberalization of trade and financial markets are combined with tight macroeconomic policies, this may contribute to downward pressure on wages in the formal economy and lead to a pattern of employment that will increase informal employment. A structural transformation also provides an opportunity for achieving environmental sustainability of growth. There is considerable potential for generation of decent work from greening the Bangladesh economy. More appropriate macroeconomic policies, along with active labor market policies, can help to manage the cyclical threats to employment and also boost the skills and capacities to ensure that workers can adapt to longer term structural changes. In Bangladesh, in Bangladesh, inclusive and sustainable development will depend 
on the integration of growth promoting macroeconomic policies with development sectors agriculture industry especially manufacturing with services policies and redistributive measures all geared towards the creation of disemployment these elements must be combined with a social protection framework aimed at eliminating the causes of poverty and its solution such as disposition from land poor housing education and health provision the structural transformation path towards greater equality can be set through creating new high productivity sectors and dissemination of technology throughout the production system this will create additional job opportunities in higher productivity sectors raise the labor force participation rates especially for women and lower both unemployment and informal mortality all these factors will create positive impacts on poverty and inequality the process will also generate a sustainable path to equality since the changes occur in the production structure which endogenously creates productive jobs builds transformation capacity and broadens the high productivity segments in the economic structure these transformations are important complementary routes to social policy and fiscal measures for assisting the most disadvantaged and poorest segments in bangladesh society for ensuring sustainable agricultural productivity and transformation policies should cover multiple areas such as enabling small farmers to achieve economies of scale facilitating agricultural diversification to respond to emerging food demand and improve income and employment opportunities supporting broad based innovation across the agriculture and food sectors managing climate risk adaptively strengthening actions to build competitive and inclusive value chains developing public and private sector capacities to ensure safe food and over time the long term competitiveness and sustainable challenges of the agriculture sector through broader government involvement and public private partnerships to shift from low technology and low value added product to higher technology and higher value added products acquiring modern technology has to be the core component of bangladesh's manufacturing strategy for the purpose the strategies for sub sectoral development need to be worked out along with linkages to technology upgradation human resource development and the market both domestic and external for the future the cottage micro small and medium enterprises need wider spotlight in bangladesh to bring about desirable changes in trade structures associated with a rapid intra industry division of labor in the increasingly globalized world the cottage micro small medium enterprises will have significant potential to contribute to rapid development through participation in international production networks and global value chains greater participation of these industries in the production networks through closer linkages with the large enterprises and multinational corporation will also be a potent means of accelerating these they are upgrading in such areas as productivity technology and managerial know how at present the bangladesh economy is turning towards a services driven economy more in terms of output rather than employment moreover 
a large share of the services sector jobs is the net is the ease of the nature of distress employment low paid jobs in activities like petty trading hotels and restaurants for the workers pushed out from the agriculture sector and not absorbed in the manufacturing activity only a limited number of high income jobs have been created in the services sector such as in information and communication technology finance and insurance real estate and business services that are growth driven and use modern technologies and business practices this shows the existence of a clear hierarchy in the services sector both in terms of employment and output growth and in terms of its growth dynamism ladies and gentlemen the key aspect of a structural transformation for bangladesh is to integrate the three key dimensions of development a structural transformation in the production structure second reduction of domestic and global income and productivity gaps and third promotion of equality the three dimensions are integrated and jointly determine the country's growth path in view of the longer term goals of building a just and equitable society with shared prosperity bangladesh's development has to ensure consistent progress in all these above three fronts covering structural change convergence and equality many developing countries for example in latin america and the caribbean have made progress on one or the other of these dimensions many countries have reduced the income gap but not the technology or productivity gaps the connotation of structural transformation has to be more comprehensive and inclusive in bangladesh than one outlined in the traditional view in effect the inclusive development paradigm consistent structural transformation process in bangladesh differs significantly from the traditional largely unidimensional concept of structural transformation in terms of changing sectoral shares of key macro aggregates the structural transformation in the bangladesh context carries a deeper and wider connotation in view of the challenges that the country faces due to its large population size high burden of poverty rising inequalities and above all its compulsion and the commitment to achieve sustained and inclusive development within a short span of time the path is to promote inclusive labor market in bangladesh that requires the adoption of a supportive pathway for inclusion in both the labor market and society especially for those who are marginalized in the labor market and for protecting their livelihoods this requires an inclusive vision on employment underpinned by investments in quality and sustainable jobs eliminating labor market and social discrimination and support all labor through <clears throat> integrated services and adequate social protection for inclusive development the implementation of inclusive labor market strategy and policy with a particular emphasis on the inclusion of the disadvantaged people and those living in poverty and social exclusion is a necessary prerequisite for bangladesh over the years bangladesh has moved closer towards applying the inclusive development tenets in policy making but the present challenge is that there is no generic formula for ensuring that the country is moving to a more inclusive development path hence 
experimentation is the key and bangladesh has to set its own pathway to move to inclusive development through drawing the le its lessons on what works and what does not within the country's changing dynamics of political economic and social configurations with these words let me thank you ladies and gentlemen for your kind attention thank you very much uh, thank you professor mustafa k mujeri thank you very much for a very comprehensive and enlightening presentation we are very honored to have you with us and it was great learning experience we are confident that our audience have also immensely benefited from it we have received lots of questions from our audience mostly on social media like facebook and twitter uh, we ask our friends in zoom chat room to drop their question in zoom chat uh, since you have lots of questions let me uh, without wasting much time let me share those with you uh, so the first question is if you compare bangladesh with india which country have more inclusive development that is one and second is how is covid 19 going to impact the inclusive growth in bangladesh and other countries of south asia oh thank you very much you know like comparing countries like india and bangladesh is a little bit problematic in the sense the vastness of india is something which is very unique to the country itself and therefore while suggesting for example there are observations that social development indicators in bangladesh in many cases are more advanced relative to india which is probably true and one of the explanation that i have given in my analysis is the fact that the grassroots level transformation in bangladesh particularly after independence in 1971 with the ngos and their social development inputs which was spread all over bangladesh that has made a difference in terms of performance in terms of social development indicators in many cases i think that is one explanation that suggests that for a country like bangladesh or india or for that matter any country in south asia our approach has to be multi dimensional in the sense that focusing only on maximizing growth is not what the south asian development demands south asian development demands a more composite approach in terms of social environmental and economic development because of the uniqueness of the region of south asia and obviously the covid 19 pandemic has affected the development of all countries in south asia as in the world itself and that has impacted the achievements not only in terms of growth but also in terms of social progress but i think the focus during the pandemic on health related issues that has provided an impetus to the countries in south asia to kind of you know like prioritize health related issues and probably this trend in the coming years will make a difference in terms of social and other inputs in other areas as well i hope i have uh, covered the issues uh, the extent possible for during this short time uh, thank, thank you, you. Uh, 
let me raise another question that has come from our audience. Uh, Sunil, he asks, with the rapid rise of economic development in Bangladesh, there is also a rise in economic inequality in Bangladesh. So mm -hmm. what steps the government of Bangladesh is taking or should take to minimize the income gap? Mm -hmm. I think, you know, like uh, the whole approach, the observation that in traditional economics, what we have learned is the fact that, you know, they like when you grow, inequality, inequality also grows. Like Kuznets curve, we have seen and the traditional explanation that inequality is obvious as growth is expanded in an economy. But I think, you know, like in case of Bangladesh or in case of South Asia or in case of our, uh, the developing countries in general, the such conclusions are not obvious. I think what is important <clears throat> and what I have focused is the fact that when we are talking about transformation, the structural transformation of our countries, the trust, structural transformation has to be seen not only in terms of certain inputs that we traditionally see in terms of, for example, sectoral shares and things like that. Because these are only on economic dimension. What is important is to see the development process as an integrated framework, which would, where social like inequality aspects are also embedded in the development strategy itself. So that these are simultaneously addressed within the strategic framework of development of our countries. Like one aspect is that we develop, we grow fast, let us grow fast, and then we'll take care of the inequality later on. I don't think for countries in South Asia, that is what is the relevant strategy that should be the relevant strategy rather we must work on inequality and growth simultaneously. And literature suggests that working simultaneously on growth and inequality does not really mean that we have to grow less. We can grow faster. At the same time, we can grow equitably. It is possible to do that. There are studies and I think for South Asia, at least uh, that's what we are talking in Bangladesh, that we must address both at the same time, not one after another. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. We have hardly uh, 10 minutes. So let me take two more questions, two to three questions. Uh, how would you define the relation between Bangladesh economic system and employment? Obviously, you know, like uh, the employment characteristics in countries in South Asia are, I think they are very common. For example, if we look at the total picture of employment in Bangladesh, more than 85% of employed labor, they are in the informal sector. Only about 15% are in the formal sector. And as we all know, I, 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 and I think in Nepal, or India, or other South Asian countries, the picture is very similar. The employment market in South Asia is highly segregated informal and formal. These are two major segments and between them, the linkages are relatively small because of the, and, and what is happening in our labor market in Bangladesh, employment in agriculture is declining, both in terms of absolute number 
and in terms of share in total employment. And the labor force is more absorbed in the services sector rather than in the manufacturing sector, what I have termed as distressed employment, because services sector is a sink where many jobs, distressed jobs with very low uh, wages, they are available in the rural, especially in rural areas, as well as in the urban areas. And that has emerged as the major employment market in Bangladesh. And that is contrary to what is decent employment is about. That we must create decent employment, good jobs. Therefore, the challenge for the labor market in Bangladesh is to create good jobs, productive jobs, decent jobs. And that is the sustainable way of reducing both poverty and as well as addressing inequality. Therefore, the labor market is the key. How we can introduce transformations in the labor market that will determine how first we can move towards more inclusive development and equitable development in Bangladesh. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, so let me raise last two questions, uh, which are interconnected. One is that at the time when most of the countries in South Asia has failed to achieve inclusive development, is it possible for Bangladesh to achieve its goal? That is one. Second, what steps should the government of Bangladesh take to create inclusive labor market? Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, like uh, as I have suggested in my paper, uh, is the fact that, you know, like uh, it's not only promoting inclusive development, it's not only the issue of policies, it's kind of a deeper one who has to go deeper into the strategic framework of development of our country. Like for instance, in the 1980s, when Washington consensus new liberalism, that was the highlight of our policies. Within that policies, the whole idea was that inequality can be addressed if markets are well developed, labor markets are well developed, product markets are well developed. So if market functions properly, then inequality issues will not be too much to handle. Therefore, market mechanism was considered as the solution to all the ills in our countries. But I think now the process of new liberalism, some of the drawbacks, particularly in the early, late 80s and early 90s, when structural adjustment policies fail to bring required structure of transformation in the developed countries, including in South Asia, then I think there is some space has been created now for more effective developmental role of the state, which is also apparent in Bangladesh. So I think this is the beginning for inclusive development. What we need, we need to take advantage of these opportunities of changing the structural transformation process in our countries, as well as the underlying strategies of addressing, as I have said before, the multi-dimensional issues in inclusive development covering as in the sustainable development goals, economic, social, and environmental aspects. In our countries, these issues have to be merged in the context of development 
philosophy itself so that both all three aspects of development are addressed to the extent they deserve attention and the process of equitable development would then begin from the structure itself which would ensure sustainability of inclusive development process in our countries thank you uh, ladies and gentlemen finally here we come to the end of the discussion uh, thank you professor muzeri for the in insightful discussion and we are really uh, honored by your valuable time we still have lots of questions but due to time constraint we'll be unable to take them it was a great session uh, Professor Mujeri, we hope to have you again in the future, maybe in person in Kathmandu. We'd also like to thank our participants for the wonderful questions. Thank you so much and have a nice day. Thank you very much.